I'm back again. Uh, whew, where do you want to start? You know, I've been spending a lot of time on uh, <laughs> looking at the maps and looking on Fastball, uh, the game, and obviously spending some time setting it up as well, which has been uh, quite enjoyable and really not that difficult. Uh, it's more uh, more of a uh, grind to set up the Guderian's Blitzkrieg maps and units than it is to uh, arrange the Case Blue stuff. There's a lot more units up this end of the map. Uh, but anyway, I, the, the reason for this video is uh, yet another on the Soviet defense. And I, I, I am focused on this because I am uh, acutely aware of my uh, lack of ability in this area. So I think if I keep talking about it long enough, perhaps something will sink in and we'll see, uh, we'll see if that makes any difference or not. Now, what I wanted to do was uh, very carefully wind this down a little bit is show you some of these black lines on the map. <clears throat> and these black lines represent areas where I uh, intend to have the uh, Soviets uh, provide the stiffest resistance in the early part of the game. And as you can see here, we're expecting to uh, have to give ground around Viasma, but certainly want to be uh, firm around Regev. I have no idea what I was saying because I was just interrupted, yeah, which is okay. I've got to help kids get along together so they're nice to each other and don't use derogatory terms that daddy uses to describe things to each other. Uh, where were we? So clearly this uh, hedgehog line around Borodino here uh, has to be uh, a, a no-go zone if we intend to hold Moscow. Uh, and if that's breached, then I, I think we'll probably have a second tighter ring around the Moscow area anyway of uh, hedgehog units. Uh, closer in here, now this may not happen in October, but you know, this would be a defensive line here along this uh, the Oka River. And given that uh, forces can reach a rail in turn one, there's nothing I can do about it, assuming all goes well for the Germans. Uh, th th this really negates the point of trying to do terribly much along here other than road bump things and slow stuff down. Perhaps use air to try and interdict uh, or find opportunities to attack rail units conversion units, if possible. I doubt that'll happen now. So the Western Front uh, really has its, its hands full uh, from a defensive standpoint, and Tula has to be the primary, the primary point of defense. It's great terrain, there's a river here. Obviously the town itself, then uh, heavy terrain here, and this river, uh, sorry, lake uh, blocking uh, movement when it's not frozen. I don't know if you can see that, there you go, that's Tula. And then down here, because of the terrain so open, uh, it's great uh, for the Germans, but it's also hard for them because of the lack of uh, rail and uh, it'll take quite a few extenders to uh, support any sort of uh, penetration this way. So I would uh, envision that if, if Kursk cannot be held, I'd like to try and hold a Kursk. Uh, I've played this once before and I haven't seen uh, it, it stand. So with that in mind, I'm looking at uh, Stardy uh, Oskol here and uh, Vigny, the Vigny as two locations. Hang on a second. <laughs> Keep hearing kids coming downstairs. Uh, as two locations that I would like to try and uh, deepen and richen uh, fort fortifications here to uh, buttress any any attempts from uh, this southern direction to reinforce what would eventually be, I think that's how we group uh, the second panzer army group, is it? Let's see. Yep, yeah. uh, second panzer army group. So, um, we don't want them uh, just barreling up this way entirely by themselves uh, or, or supported by uh, units from, from down here. So this kind of moves us then into the EATG and Case Blue maps. 
And on this side of uh, the equation, it becomes a, 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 a somewhat spotty affair. It may be that Kharkov can be held. Uh, I might be wrong in my assumption that it'll fall quickly uh, or be isolated quickly because the terrain is actually fairly conducive to uh, defense. And you've got, uh, you've, you know, you've got the Donets River here that will allow uh, some protection on this one flank. But Kharkov itself is uh, seemingly easy to encircle and cut supply off of. So the, the fallbacks then become uh, isolated uh, junctions and terrain as we head down towards Rostov. And I think that as new units come on the board, I would try and locate them in those key, those four key areas that we were just looking at, one, two, three, four, and uh, put some supply in there, some hedgehogs in there if I can, uh, put some working units there to build hedgehogs, and really start building uh, you know, something that can uh, develop into a pocket that would, uh, if pocketed, that would last a period of time and give us an opportunity to uh, be a thorn in the side of uh, the free and easy movement of forces with the view that, and obviously keeping uh, Rostov as long as possible down there and fortifying that location as well. You know, how this all plays out, we don't know yet. We don't know uh, very much. I've seen photographs and all that sort of good stuff, but we don't know a lot about how the game, how it will play out. And that's, that's all part of the fun, right? So it's all conjecture at this point, but these are my assessments based on what I know and what I've seen from various pictures, excuse me, of various scenarios. And then of course we, we need to try to hold Sevastopol down the other end of the map there. Uh, so that's the general, that's my, my general thinking at this point. Uh, I'd love to hear any other thoughts and ideas. I know a lot of you have played some of these very, you know, different scenarios and have ideas on, on what can and can't be done. Uh, let's try and combine some of that wisdom and knowledge and see if we can come up with uh, a robust defense for the, uh, for the Soviet player. And hopefully we'll be getting started in the next, uh, next uh, few days or so. Talk to you soon.